the story of chocolate begins way back in time in Central and South America. The name is known as cacao, and the ancient Mayans and Aztecs used to use it and believed it had divine properties. In fact, they have an ancient god of rain and water who actually stole the tree from his brother gods and planted it on earth. The cacao pod is a gourd-like fruit and grows on the tree. An average pod produces 20 to 50 cacao beans. A tree reaches its maturity in about eight years, at which point it begins to bear between 20 to 30 pods. The pods are then cut from the tree and the beans are removed and collected. This next step is one of the most delicate stages in the processing of raw cacao. Temperature, timing, and overall handling of the bean are critical to the final flavor of the resulting chocolate. The cacao beans and white pulp are next fermented together for several days. This process gives chocolate its special flavor because when fermented, it properly loses much of its bitterness and gains the aroma of chocolate. After fermenting, the beans contain a high moisture content and are sun-dried. After spending three to five days drying on special racks, the cacao beans are grated and packed in burlap bags for shipment to a processing factory. Upon arrival at the chocolate processing plant, the beans are clean, roasted, and ground and processed into chocolate and other products. Nothing is wasted. The hulls and husks are packed in burlap bags and can be used as mulch. Before we could enter the processing plant, we had to don head coverings. We went through the glass door and entered into a very sterile environment. Our guide explained every step of the way. On the shelf, we saw bottles of flavoring that I used to for the chocolate. The melted chocolate is poured into a mold on a table and allowed to dry. It is, the mold is then removed and it is ready to be processed and cut up. A sharp mold cutter is used. The chocolate arrives in the enrobing room on trays. The chocolate or caramels have to be separated when they are placed on the conveyor belt. The separated chocolate or caramel goes into an enrobing process. No chocolate is wasted. Any that is not used is remelted and used again. 
It now goes through a long conveyor belt where it is cooled and comes out at the other end in preparation for packing. We get to sample some chocolate before we continue on with our tour. In the packing room, the chocolate is packaged in preparation for shipment out to stores. Some of it might be completely covered in plastic and in other cases, simply sealed. Here we have some examples of chocolates that have been molded and are for sale. Articles can also be hand dipped and our guide demonstrated dipping a spoon into the chocolate which we were later given. Then each one of us had the opportunity to dip it into the chocolate and lay it on the parchment paper to dry. Later we took it home. This is the Chocolate Museum. The entrance to the museum having all sorts of chocolate memorabilia. Gracias. I only have time for a quick warm-up, okay? Everyone, let's start with smile exercises. One, two, three, four. Smile, stop. Smile, stop. No frowns. Ha, 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 ha. Coco then proceeded to give us the 10 reasons for eating chocolate, ending with the final one saying that if one ate a whole box of chocolate on one day, they have done one good thing. As in every tour, it always ends in the gift store where we were able to see the many different kinds of things that they had for sale and all the delicious candy that was available for purchase. Needless to say, we did purchase. <laughs>